does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to be checking out Livestock Uprising from Dog Might. This is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and I'll take about one to two hours to play. And in Livestock Uprising, you will be taking control of either goats or pigs or chickens or cows and trying to control the barnyard by harvesting the most uh, plants and vegetables and forming an army and then colliding with your opponents in some dice-driven combat. Sound intriguing? Let's open up and see how it works. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Livestock Uprising. So, first and foremost, we've got a handy dandy rule sheet. It's probably about 10 page, double sided, full color. Um, a very well done rule booklet, I will say. It's one of those rule booklets that will have you playing as you're learning, which I know some people aren't a big fan of, but I really, really enjoy. Uh, especially for a game that's one or two hours like this one can be. Sometimes it's even shorter. Uh, so it's going to get you off the ground, up and on the ground and running. Now, I do want to mention that this is not a complex game, but there is a lot going on at this game. So I'm just going to try and brush over everything I can show you. So in this game, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be taking control of an army of animals. You got pigs, and you got chickens, and you got cows, and you got goats, and you're going to start off with three of those generals, uh, aptly titled one, two, and three. And as you can see, you're also going to get those pawns that have one, two, and three on them with the pigs. Now the other guys are going to do the same thing. They'll have three, two, and one of chicken, three, two, and one of goats, so on and so forth. So that's just going to be representing your teams and your commanders on there. And what you're going to be doing in this game is you're going to be setting out a board, and it's going to be a modular board. Uh, and as you can see, the, we have a two-player game set up. If you want to do a three- and four-player game, you're going to add uh, more and more of these and have a larger board. But the two-player board is going to be a five-by-five five grid. And let's take a look at the board because uh, it's going to help you understand a little bit of what you're going to be doing in this game. In this game, what you are going to be doing is there's two phases. In the first phase, you are going to be going around the board, occasionally attacking your opponent with dice rolling and uh, st stats, which we'll get more into in a second. And you're going to be going to various different spots on the board and trying to harvest the things on the board. When you harvest these things, like this apple or this corn or this uh, hail bay or the grass, you're going to get these tokens over here, which is included in this trough, which uh, you can order from their website. And once you have those, you're going to be able to create troops and make your generals, these guys down here, more powerful. So let's take a look at the troops down here. So the troops down here, there's going to be five troops in the game, and everyone can purchase these five troops. So we'll take a look at them. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, when you first start the game, your generals, these guys, can only harvest grass. So if you're near a carrot or if you're on an apple, that's not going to help you at all until you get these guys to help you out. So let's go over them. First and foremost, we got our sacrificial sheep, which is going to allow you to now, in addition to be able to harvest grass, you'll be able to harvest hay. Uh, and once you have the hay, then you can afford to make the dynamite donkey. Uh, so let's see. In order to make a sacrificial sheep, you're going to need to have two grass, and you turn those in. And then you would take this sacrificial sheep, and you'd say, yeah, I now have a sacrificial sheep, which means I can now harvest hay. So you're going to decide, you're going to look down here at your three general cards, and you're going to decide which one of your generals could use this the most, which one maybe is near hay, and then you might stack it right here. Uh, the important thing you want to be able to see is the, the defense and the attack on this. Because now, uh, this guy is going to have plus one to his defense. This is plus uh, zero attack, and this is plus one on defense. So this guy is pretty weak, but he's going to get you started, and he's going to allow you to get hay. So now that you get hay, you can go ahead and get your dynamite donkey down here with one uh, grass and two... Uh, to hay. So now that you've got that, you can get your dynamite donkey who's going to give you one attack, he's going to give you one defense, and he can also harvest corn! Which means now you're going to be able to have access to corn, and once again you're going to put this down uh, below one of your generals down here, so one of your generals is now going to have an additional attack when he rolls the die. And now that you're going to be able to do corn, you'll be able to get the Bloodthirsty Llama, which will allow you to get carrots, which will allow you to get the Berserker Horse, so on and so forth, until you can get down to the Honorary Oxen. Uh, it's kind of a ladder, so to speak, whereas you can't just get the Berserker Horse until you get the Llama, until you get the Donkey, until you get the Sheep. You really have to make your way down the list. And we'll get more into that 
a little bit later. Um, so the only uh, really unique one of these, I will say, is the Onry Oxen. Now, he is not going to help you with harvesting at all. However, he's going to add three to your attack and three to your defense. So he's a really good one to have, especially endgame, which we'll get into a little bit. So those are your troops, and everyone's going to have access to purchasing these five troops. Now, over here, you're going to have your special forces. Now, these are exclusive to just your team. These are guys that you can get for various different costs, and they're going to give you special abilities. So this guy, corn and carrot harvests are double for this army. So whichever, uh, whichever general has this guy is going to be able to get double corn or double carrot when it does the harvest. Carrot harvest is doubled for this army. Corn harvest is doubled for this army. So I'm assuming this one is the more powerful guy. Uh, they're not going to add too much to your attack and defense, but they're going to really help you harvest. And as you can see, the pig's motto is, he who harvests wins. Whereas the cow's motto is, we will not be moved, which means they're going to have really good defense. The chickens are clucking fast. That means they get to go three spaces instead of two spaces. And the ghosts are the first into battle, which means they're going to have bonuses to their attack. So... At the beginning of the game, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving around the board, uh, attacking people by rolling dice, and it's a very simple dice rolling mechanism where you're going to be rolling dice and then adding up uh, your army's totals on these, and whoever has the most uh, is going to win the battle, and they'll get to stay where they are, and then the other opponent is going to be ejected out of that space to a nearby space and lose one of the guys, but they get to choose which of their guys they lose. So, for instance, you know, if they lost this donkey, it's not a huge deal because you can just go buy another donkey. However, once you lose your special forces, they are out of the game forever. So you got to be careful with how you're managing your special forces. All right, let's rewind. I'm trying to fit everything in here. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention are these command cards down here. You're also going to start the game, in addition to your, your three generals, uh, you're going to start the game with three of these command cards. And these are really going to shake the game up. These are especially, uh, essentially cards that are going to let you break rules of the game. Uh, but only one time during the game. So, for instance, Heavy Hooves. Play this card after winning a battle to inflict an additional casualty on the losing army. So instead of losing one of their guys, they would lose two. Uh, play this card on your turn to move any number of troops between any of your armies. So you can essentially... Uh, you know, move this donkey from the one-star general to the three-star general because he's going to need it more, or, or whatever you want to do. Now, these command cards really spice things up a little bit because you're not going to use them all in a, diff in a given game. You're going to put the rest back in the box, and once you've used all three of your command cards, you don't get any more. So uh, every game is going to be a little bit different in that avenue. So... What have we talked about? We've talked about the troops, we've talked about the special forces, we've talked about all that sort of stuff. You're going to be building up your army and building it up and building it up and building it up and attacking and doing all that until you're ready to form the giant army, which is where the second phase of the game will begin. So we're going to talk about the second phase of the game. All right, so Super Army phase, what's going to happen is uh, eventually you're going to get to the point where you are ready to initiate the second phase of the game. And any player can do this pretty much at any time they want, as long as they've got all three of their guys back at their barn. Because you are going to have your barn, which I forgot to mention is going to be your starting hub, and also where you're going to initiate the second phase. So once that happens, you're going to go there, you're going to initiate the second phase, you're going to say bye-bye to your generals, and you're still going to use them, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but then you're going to get your big mamma jamma, your super big army tile, which as you can see is much larger, and this is going to represent the fact that you have the super army. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get rid of your, uh, your one and your three, begin, because you're going to be using that to uh, represent your attack and your defense on your battle board, which as you can see is just the back side of our uh, little purchasing board, and and you are going to have one army, and it's going to have up to 15 of your uh, troops underneath, like your sacrificial sheep and your dynamite donkey and your special troops and all that different sort of stuff. And you're going to place them all down there, and you're going to count up how much total attack you have and how much total defense you have. So you'd say, you'd, and you're going to take the top three, and you're going to say, all right, I might have 27 defense, and I might have 15 attack. And now you are ready to start really pummeling stuff. Now, this is the phase of the game uh, where you can enter it by yourself. So the other guy might still be going around collecting things and trying to harvest them and build up his army. But you are going to have a severe advantage over this guy for two main reasons. First and foremost, uh, initially when you were attacking other people and defending, you rolled one dice. However, once you become super army, you're going to be rolling two dice, which means you're really going to be able to pound people and pretty much win every single time. Um, 
Also, you're going to be doing more damage to people, they're going to have more casualties, and you're going to get one of these very special battle plan cards once you become a big army. And this is going to give you a special ability. Play this card at any time to add a Berserker horse if available to any army. So, boom, that's pretty nice. Duel of Champions. Play this card during any battle. The attacker and defender each choose a single troop to fight in the battle. The other troops do not participate. So pretty much, if you were just about to lose and you knew you were going to get crushed, you could say, all right, it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one battle, and then you might win that, and that might help you win the game. But it's going to be one special card that's going to have you sort of an ace up your sleeve. Uh, but what's probably going to happen is you're just going to end up beating each other up, rolling the dice until all your guys are casualty, and your defense goes down, and your attack goes down. And what's going to happen is eventually one person is going to win the game by completely killing the other person's super army. That's not a super army. Uh, but you're all going to have your super armies out on the board. You're going to be beating the crap out of each other until someone uh, loses. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is that this also has a mechanic where if there's more than two players, obviously we don't have this, that two people who, as long as they are adjacent to an opponent, can team up to beat up that opponent. But the catch is uh, the other person loses their next turn. So it's a, it's a risk-reward kind of deal. But you're going to continue to do that until your super armies collide and until one super army is victorious. And that, in a nutshell, is how Livestock Uprising is played. Oh, great dokery. Livestock Uprising from Dog Mike. What is my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the pro side, this game is really, really nicely made. Box insert, components, rule booklet, uh, illustrations, artwork, everything is just absolutely top notch. You will feel when you open this box like you got your money worth. This is, this, is, this is a sturdy, heavy box, great components, great rule booklet, all of that is top notch. Also, there is a, a tad bit of humor here. It is a funny situation, a funny scenario, and they try and go with that a little bit. By, this is by no means a hilarious or funny game, but it does have that added little extra theme. And the theme, I will say, it does kind of fit. It does feel like you're running around and trying to build up your armies and do all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, man. Uh, the last pro, I guess, is that it, it, it can play shorter than... It says one to two hours, but I definitely think you can knock out a game a lot shorter, depending on when you decide to form your super army. And that's that's all I got. Uh, moving on to the cons. Livestock Uprising. Oof, it's a dud. This this one did not hit at all. And there's, there's a couple big reasons why. The first and main, most important reason for me is that you do the same thing over and over and over again. There's no veering paths in this game. It's not like one of those games where you can say, oh man, I wish I would have done this instead of that. There's none of that in this game. Now granted, if you have the pigs, you can try and get the, the, the pig special force out so that you can harvest quicker. If you have the chickens, you can try and do it so you can go faster, attack more, and attack less. But it really doesn't feel like it's going to make a big difference anytime you do it. And when we did try mixing up the strategies, it was still pretty much the same game. Also, the game felt very disjointed. It really did. You start off, and you're collecting, you're building up armies, you're doing this, and you're trying to work your way up, and then it's just like, oh, I'm a super army. And then it forces everyone else to become a super army, which is annoying. Like, maybe I want to keep harvesting. Maybe I want to keep having small battles. No, when someone becomes the super army, you have to go and you have to form your super army. There's no choice about it because they're going to crush you every single time they come and attack you because they're rolling two dice and they're going to have a huge, gigantic army. Also, I didn't like the team up aspect. While it sounds like a good idea, losing a turn, it, it, you just can't do it because they're just going to turn around and beat the heck out of the guy that attacks them. And, and I, I just didn't like that at all. Um, I did think of two more pros, though, just off the top of my head. I did like the special cards that they get you and how each game is going to be different with those special cards. I enjoyed that avenue because somebody would be like, oh, I got this, and you'd be like, ha, special card, ha, ha, and that changes things slightly. But overall, Livestock Uprising, uh, complete dud. Cannot recommend this game. Maybe if it was released ten years ago, it would have been better, but, but games have evolved, and this game has not evolved. You're building up your armies in a linear fashion, and then you're just going to roll dice until you crush one another. Super simple, but not in a good way. That's Livestock Uprising from Game Night, a game that I definitely cannot recommend. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And also, in the comments below, let me know 
What makes you sad? Can you can you tell me a game that has just absolutely fantastic components, but then the gameplay is just blah, and it's just so like ah, it's just such a shame. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Livestock Uprising. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.